What's up guys, Upcycle the Past here. On today's episode, I will show you my uh, Mark II GTI. Uh, I will show you the exterior, the interior, all of its imperfections and what I will have to do on it in the future, alongside the Mark I project. Uh, but uh, the main focus, focus on today's video is that I will change all the locks on the car because I have one aftermarket ignition key and all the other locks are closed with a um, Chinese uh, central locking mechanism which I really do hate to have in an uh, old car, a young timer. And the other thing, I will uh, mount a front lip for the grill, which is called here in Romania the bad boy look. <laughs> bad boy look, it's hilarious, but that's how it's called, the bad boy look. Um, I like it how it looks and especially I, I, I want to do this mod on the car because I have a couple of fitment issues on the driver's side between the wing and the grill because at one point the, uh, the driver's side, the front of the car from the driver's side was in a crash or something because the alignment of the hood and the wing and the grill it's not perfect the other side is perfect but on the right side it's not so good and this uh, little plastic uh, lip for the grill will kind of close off close in all of the imperfections on that side so it will be about changing locks painting plastics and uh, showing some classic cars hope you enjoy it stay tuned guys so this is the uh, the gap which I was talking about. You can see it clearly that almost my finger can go in there. But on the other side the gap is really good. This is called the bad boy look. And um on this episode we are going to paint it and uh, mount it on the on the front grill. Now it's held up with tape just for the <laughs> video's sake. It will require some mods because I will have to grill I will have to drill out the grill to put the to put this on. But it looks really nice in my opinion. Okay, so to mount the front lip, we will have to take off the grill. So you need to disconnect, you need to open these two screws, four tabs which you push in with a screwdriver so, don't so you don't break the clips, and the two uh, projectors. You need to disconnect the two projectors, and the front grill is off. Like, you just got to love old cars, because basically in one minute you just took off the front of the car. God, I, I, I love I love them. I don't. I don't.
Okay, so here are all the necessary things to paint a plastic part for almost any kind of car. First of all, we will prepare the surface with a uh, 1500 grit uh, sandpaper. I don't want to use rougher one because it's a kind of soft plastic and I want the finish to be really great. So I will use a 1500 grit. You must... Um, you must uh, do this because otherwise the primer and the paint will not stick to the surface. Very important, you need to use a primer for plastics. You can't use uh, normal primers, those uh, which are green, uh, grey colored and such like that, because uh, those are not meant for plastic. You must use a primer plastic for, for the paint to last. So this is around uh, $10. It's really good from Duplicolor. After that, I have um, color matching uh, spray can paint for my car, which is the Volkswagen Tornado Red. This was also around uh, eight to ten dollars. A really good, uh, really good uh, paint. I I painted my front bumper with this technique, and it came out really good. After that, a glossy uh, clear coat finish and uh, a degreaser before you start the primer. And uh, that's kind of it. Brought to you by Bilstein, or not. <laughs> so, the package arrived with the, with the spare parts. So, we have a fuel cap, we have the ignition, 
the tailgate lock. I mean, uh, sorry, the glove box lock. The tailgate lock. The two front door locks. And the holy grail. The original Mark II key. One key to open them all. So really happy with this. I'm really happy. So this is the only screw holding the door handle inside. Amazing. Okay, so for uh, this one to be changed, there is that one screw which has to be uh, taken out and uh, you can swap the, the lock. It's a tiny screw, okay, you take this off. Be careful because there is a tiny spring. You can leave the spring in. I prefer to leave it in because it's a pain to put it back. This is the lock. Okay, so the easiest way is to put the key in the lock and a bunch of grease and just put it in and put back all the things the little spring and the little lever and everything and you should be fine and same on the other side so this is finished Amazing. Now the hardest uh, part to swap is this one. It's uh, it's really hard. I mean, it's kind of impossible if you don't have the proper tools to do it. So yeah, uh, I will make a two-hour-long video how to change the fuel cap. Easy. To change the tailgate uh, lock, tail door lock, you just unscrew these four screws like this. The same tab which we pulled this thing has to come out like that. So this was on the car. Of course I broke the tabs off because I'm a complete idiot but I don't care because anyhow it's a piece of you know what, do do. Uh, be careful to to put this uh, little seal back so that the plastic doesn't rattle around. It's not so important. Great success! Okay, so for the glove box, I'm I'm kind of disappointed, and I, I didn't notice this one before, but um, it's glued in. 
Uitej. Ugh, disgusting. Because otherwise it's pretty, it's really easy because it's, you only... It's this tab which holds the whole thing inside and that tab is glued to the glove box. Okay, so the ignition, I changed the ignition switch because um, I couldn't take the whole assembly down. Uh, but it, the, it's, it, it's fine, it works because this was already modded. As you can see, it has a little hole there, so you can put a screwdriver in there and the ignition switch pops out. But in the future, I will replace uh, the old one with this because this has way better. Uh, uh, this one, I don't know how it's called, but this is way better because mine, because of that, the steering wheel moves. But as you can see, the new key ignition, the engine starts. Great success! This is the disgusting Chinese central locking system and I really, uh, I will take all of this cable out and all of the little uh, servo motors out so I can finally throw this hideous piece of shite out of here. Everything's fine. Everything is okay. You're going into a better place. You're going into into plastic heaven. It's okay. Don't you cry no more. You may rest in peace now, you piece of shite. So here is my soldering station, soldering, soldering station. And I will use a bunch of heat, heat shrink tubing, not electrical tape. Here it was hot wired, if you can see this and that so there I will have to reapply electrical tape because I don't want to cut the cable in half and uh, re-solder it and there they're the same it was hot wired so I will clean these up solder these up and uh, job done okay so I finished the cable management as you can See, it's a kind of mess, but now everything can be tucked away nicely and nice and clean. I fitted all the plastics back in place as they should be. Because of that Chinese thing, this, this didn't fit quite well and it was deformed and distorted and now everything is in line and really nice. So, really happy with this one. So, this is the interior of the car. I have the period correct beta beta 3 
radio, the AC uh, control unit. I fitted uh, these uh, three video um, gauges, they are really nice. And this plate is 3D printed and uh, painted with textured paint. The electrical windows, this. The seats will be repaired soon. Leather steering wheel. Both door panels have this thing because the electric because the switches for the electrical windows were uh, fitted there. Shame because you cannot really repair that. And also in the back, the seats are in fair condition. But two hideous speakers in that precious door panel. It has the grey head, vinyl, or how do you call it? But other than that, it's a really good interior. I have two holes here because some genius put a phone holder there. So that's a shame because this is the soft dashboard. Kind of rare and expensive to replace. And that's, this should be the interior. On the exterior, I have the factory BBS RA wheels in really good condition, all four of them. These plastic um, uh, trims, I will have to, to work on them a little bit because look, they are really not straight. But that's not a big of a problem, but the paint job is really nice. I'm kind of happy with it. The grill, I'm working on it. You know, the episode what you're watching. <laughs> Here, I don't know if I can catch it, but... It doesn't see on the camera, but here it has a huge crack in the clear coat. You can see it right there. I have the... I reconditioned the Hela uh, stoplights. Also this had two holes in it for speakers and I filled them up like this. In the future if I will find a replacement one for this I will be really happy to change it. In the back, that's a um, aftermarket Hacko Hackblend, an original Zander spoiler, and the muffler is a Bozal muffler. I changed the whole um, exhaust system for Bozal, which is nice. So this is the Mark II GTI. What do you guys think about it? I will have to work on it because I want it to be in a better condition, but uh, I'm not ashamed of it in this condition, so <laughs> I'm really happy with it. So, this is the engine working. Revs really nicely. But I have a problem with the uh, power assisted steering pump because that uh, makes a lot of squeaking noise because other than that everything I was checked and it's fine. But the real problem with the engine is... I will show you here. So with... Uh, with uh, the cold engine, because this is uh, it's, it's not warmed up yet, I have almost five bar of pressure, oil pressure. But after the engine gets warm, it drops uh, below one. And uh, after I consulted with a uh, bunch of mechanics, all of them said that it's uh, may, it's probably the oil pump. So uh, that will be changed soon because I really do hate the fact that when the oil gets warm. When the oil gets warm, the pressure drops. It's really, really annoying. So that's the 
that's the major issue with the engine right now but other than that I think it has almost all of its uh, ponies because it drives really really good but I can't uh, I don't want to drive with it um, because uh, I'm afraid um, that because of the oil pressure problem I might damage the engine so um, but I will make a uh, driving experience video with the car as well soon M mostly in, maybe in the summer when I will fix the this oil pressure problem because it might it, it could be anything else maybe that doesn't fix it so after that comes the bigger problems checking the the pressure from the combustion chambers head gasket um, uh, ceiling rings around the camshaft and stuff like that because anywhere it can uh, lose oil pressure so stay tuned also in my in the oil pressure gauge I have two dead bugs <laughs> and I can't get them out of there it's really annoying <laughs> look at them the two dead bugs in my gauge but if I open if, if I open the gauge I destroy the gauge so so that's for it for today's episode uh, I hope you enjoyed it it was uh, kind of <laughs> it was it wasn't not big of a deal but uh, I think the uh, bad boy look came out really good I'm happy with it uh, as you can see on this corner, because of this plastic lip, you can't really tell that it's uh, the fitment. It's not uh, good between the the wing hood and the grill. So uh, it came out really nice. Also, all of the locks are changed. Um, I showed you the uh, exterior of the car, the interior of the car. Please leave in the comments what would you like to see next. Uh, of the from the mark to do you want to see the interior the seats how uh, how can they be repaired um, an external polish for the paintwork I want to paint all of the plastic black trims with texture the paint uh, um, soon so if you're interested in that I can make a video about that as well and um, thank you for watching see you soon guys